Garofalo. Good to see you. Thank you. You know, there is nothing more interesting than seeing a bunch of racists become confused and angry it's, at a speech they're not quite certain what he's saying. It sounds right to them, and then, and then it doesn't make sense, which... Let's, let's be very honest about what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about bashing Democrats. It's not about yeah. taxes. They have no yeah. idea what the Boston Tea Party was about. That's right. They don't know their history at all. This is about hating a black man in the White House. This is racism straight up. That is nothing but a bunch of tea-banging rednecks. A well-known Democrat uses the Ku Klux Klan to try and make a few bucks in a fundraising appeal. Alan Grayson of Florida made a plea Monday night that included Klan members burning a cross. The T in that cross helps spell out Tea Party. The text follows with, now you know what the T stands for. Well, the black community doesn't need to be reminded of the horrors perpetrated by the KKK, yet their so-called leaders remain silent. You got the Former Tea Party. They can be found engaging in just the, the vilest type of racism at all levels. This has been their go-to issue since the Koch, since the Koch brothers put them together. Well, actually, Rush Boat, racism is the belief that one race, whites, should rule all others. Get your definition straight. But it's an old con game that goes back centuries, where you have the rich white elites and others who can manipulate and play on poor white folks' racial anxieties to turn them against black folks. And you said something really, really important there about violence and assassination attempts. Now, I know we're going to talk about this, but we have some new data out now that actually suggests that the Tea Party, as I like to call it, is a version of the typhoid Mary of racism in American politics, <laughs> where the longer that these folks are with the Tea Party, the more racially resentful they become, the more identified with the white identity movement, which is just a code word for white supremacy. Well, they Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. No, I don't think there's a double standard at all. I think it's entirely legitimate to look at the Tea Party. I mean, here are a group of people who are admittedly racist, who are overtly political, who tried as best they can to harm President Obama in every way they can. I don't think there are correct parallels between the incidents. There's a body of congressional people that want to paralyze the system. I think what sits underneath it, unfortunately, is there's probably some racism involved, which is really awful. For joining us, it seems to me that what a lot of us who work on this show and have watched this program, we've been amazing. We've made a real effort to show the face of the Tea Party. All the placards up there, the sort of Hitler mustaches, the, the black face, if you will, superimposed on the face of uh, Barack Obama. These obvious racial canards that keep popping up in the, in the sort of the visuals. What does your study tell you about the nature of the racial peer of the Tea Party? Well, thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, my study suggests that there is a strain of, of racism in the Tea Party, going all the way back to when the study began in, in 2010, that there's definitely a racist strain, but it goes beyond racism. It goes to homophobia and xenophobia as well, Chris. Well, let's talk about how they all fit together. You know, is it is sure. sort of a is it sort of a, a resumption of the old South of uh, the way things were before uh, the Civil War, for example? When you get, do they want it? Is it like that old dreamy nostalgia you get in the old movies? You know what I mean? Going with the wind. Is it that kind of America they want to bring back, or what? When they don't, where there were no gays, where blacks were slaves, where <laughs> where the, the Mexicans were in Mexico. I mean, is this what they want? That's precisely the case, Chris. What, what we found out, we've come up with something that we call reactionary conservatism. And what that means is, whereas a regular conservative, a more mainstream conservative, um, recognizes change is necessary to avoid revolutionary change, a reactionary conservative actually wants to go back in time. And in the book, we tie the Tea Party to the Know Nothing Party of the 1850s, the Klan of the 1920s, the John Birch Society of the late 1950s and 1960s. It's the same it's the same belief system, Chris, this idea that they're scared of losing the America that they know and love to these other groups Please of people. Stop. If you're going to talk about race, at least, at least know what you're talking about. At least know what you're talking about. Well, tell me how much you know about being black. Well, this is and a democratic, democratic segregationists were all liberal Democrats. It is a lie that they were conservative Everybody Democrats. Was Darling, and then you know, they basically, they, everybody was. White people were. It didn't matter whether they were Republicans. Were. Why do they get the idea? If it isn't ethnic, and I'll just leave the possibility that it's not, why do they just assume evil 
on the part of Obama. I mean, he's raised his, li his whole life has been crystal clear and clean as a whistle and transparent. We know his whole life through all the great, excellent education he's had, the good part working through a pro bono work he's done throughout his life. He's never been a money grubber. He's never done anything wrong in his life, legally, ethically, whatever. His family is picture perfect. The way he's raised those daughters, the, the mar everything is clean as a whistle. And yet they just referred him as evil. They just referred him as a lie. I just got to believe it's ethnic with these people. They just got a problem with this guy being president. Well, Is I there any other evidence to justify why they keep calling him a bad man? And that's what they do. Has Obama helped the process of eradicating racism? Or has it in a I don't strange think way made it worse? Made it worse. Made it worse. Look at the... Look. The Tea Party is who are controlling the Republican Party, stated, and what's this guy's name, uh, Mitch, Mitch O'Connell, is that his name, O'Connell? Yeah, See? Mitch McConnell, yeah. Mitch McConnell. Their stated policy, publicly stated, is to do whatever it takes to see to it that Obama only serves one term. Mm -hmm. What's, what, what is that, what underlines that? Screw the country. We're going to do whatever we do to get this black man. We can, we're going to do whatever we can to get this black man out of here. But is that necessarily a racist thing? It is a racist thing. Is it not it's... just Republicans? Wouldn't they say that about any Democrat No, because they would have gotten rid of Bill Clinton. I'm just going to tell you right now, I want to end it on a media bashing note, because that will, that will uplift me like a Dion Warwick final rendition. We're watching you to play the race card. MSNBC. We saw how you cynically placed the Reverend Sharpton in a position of absurdist power. This is Dadaism. I learned that in college, that they would allow for this guy to have a show. This is Dadaism. It's freaky. It's Andy Kaufman. It doesn't make sense unless you understand what they're doing. This is going to be the dog whistle election cycle. They tested him in 2011, so he and his pal Toure, and that punk Tim Jacob Wise, and Ed, and Maddow can sit there and call everyone who's Caucasian racist. I heard it. I used is instead of are. He's a racist. That's a dog whistle. Ignore it when Congressman Rand does it against Alan West. No more. We're going to go after you. I bought a dog whistle. I bought a dog whistle factory, and I'm giving you dog whistles. And we're going to listen to every word that comes out of your mouth, and we're going to hold you to the same standard that you hold to us, which is an impossible one, and you're going to have a hell of a time in 2012 because America has finally awoken to your Saul Linsky bullshit tactics, and we're coming to get you. Thank you very much.